हेलो एंड वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग विद आर लिटरेचर दैट इज एक्सपेरिमेंट्स बाय लुइसा मे एल्कॉट इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट वी हैड लर्न दैट द फोर गर्ल्स हैड वेकेशन व्हिच वाज अबाउट थ्री मंथ्स लॉन्ग एंड दे डिसाइडेड टू टेक अ ब्रेक अ ब्रेक फ्रॉम वॉट दे वर टेकिंग केयर ऑफ द यंगर सिबलिंग्स एंड दे फेल दैट वॉज क्वाइट हार्ड वर्क एंड दे थॉट दैट then will not do any work for any reason under the sun their mother mrs march did not like their idea and she was quite quite skeptical that this kind of attitude these values that the girls were imbibing were not right and uh, she decided something different uh, to make the girls learn and understand the values that they need to imbibe in order to grow to be good girls and good women let us proceed from the part where we had left all right let's proceed from here the from here the mother had mentioned that they may continue with their uh, they may proceed with their plan for a short while but she was quite sure that the plan is not going to work she said that you may try your experiment for a week and see how you like it i think by saturday night you'll find that all play and no work is as bad as all work and no play we stopped at this point and we are going to continue from here on oh dear no it will be delicious i'm sure said meg complacently complacently means quite lazily and uh, uh, not willing to do anything more i now uh, propose a toast to my friend and partner Sairi Camp says fun forever and no grubbing cried jo rising glass in hand and uh, sorry ra- rising the glass in hand as the lemonade went around if you remember the girls were having a lemonade party because their vacation had started they all drank it merrily and began to experiment by lounging for the rest of the day next morning meg did not appear till 10 o'clock that means she was sleeping Her solitary breakfast did not taste good and the room seemed lonely and untidy for Jo had not filled the vases Beth had not dusted and Amy's books lay scattered about Now you can see that housekeeping is not taking place at all because these four girls decided to take time off they would not do anything Beth had not dusted and Amy's book lay scattered nothing was neat and pleasant but mummy's corner which looked as usual and their meg sat to rest and read which meant to yawn and imagine that pretty summer dresses she would get with her salary jo spent the morning on the river and lorry and the afternoon reading and crying over the wide wide world up in the apple tree beth began uh, the rummaging everything out of the big closet where her family recited but getting tired uh, tired before half done she felt her establishment topsy turvy topsy turvy means lying here and there in dif- disorder and went to her music rejoicing that she had no dishes to watch wash sorry uh, emmy arranged her bower put on her best white frock smoothed uh, her curls and sat down to draw under the honeysuckle hoping someone would see an inquired about the young artist was as no one appeared um, but an inquisitive daddy long legs who examined her work with interest she went to walk got caught in a shower and came home dripping at tea time they compared notes and all agreed that it had been a delightful though unusually long day meg who went shopping in the afternoon got a sweet blue muslin and uh, uh, muslin is a kind of soft cloth cloth had discovered after she had cut the breadths off and it wouldn't wash with mishap made her slightly cross jo had burned the skin of her nose boating and got a raging headache by reading too long beth was worried by the confusion of her closet and the difficulty of learning three and four three or four songs at once emmy deeply regretted regretted the damage done um, her frock for Katie Brownie's party was to be the next day and now Flora be flimsy she had nothing to wear but these were mere trifles this means were ordinary things 
and they assured their mother that the experiment was working finely what was their experiment that they will not do any housework they will just while away times with their, their hobbies or whatever they wanted to do she smiled said nothing and with hana's help did their neglected work keep home pleasant and domestic machinery running smoothly who was hana when hana was the servant to the cook it was astonishing uh, with the peculiar and uncomfortable state of the things was produced by the resting uh, resting and reveling process the days kept getting longer and longer the weather was unusually variable so were the tempers tempers means they were getting angry an unsettled feeling possessed everyone and satan found plenty of mischief for the idle hands to do that means empty mind is the workshop of devil as the height of luxury meg put out some of her sewing and then found time to hang so heavily that she fell to snipping and spoiling her clothes in her attempts to furbish them up a la moffet jo read till her eyes gave out and she was sick of books got so fidgety with that even good-natured lorry had a quarrel with her quarrel means they fought and so reduced and um, in spirits that she desperately wished she had gone with aunt march Uh, Beth got on pretty well, for she was constantly forgetting that it was to be all play and no work, and fell back into her old ways now and then. But something in the air affected her, and more than once, her tranquillity was much disturbed. So much so that no one, um, on no on one occasion, she actually shook poor dear Jonah, and told her she was a fright. Amy felt worst of all. for her resources were small when her sisters felt her to amuse herself she so- soon found that accomplished an important little self a great burden she didn't like dolls fairy tales were childish and one couldn't draw all the time tea parties didn't amount to much neither did picnics unless they well conduct and unless very well conducted If one could have a fine house full of nice girls or go travelling the summer would be delightful but to stay at home with three selfish sisters a grown up boy was enough to try the patience of a boss complained miss malaprop after several days devoted to pleasure fretting and night no one would own the word day that they were tired of the experiment but by friday night each acknowledged to herself that she was glad the week was nearly done hoping to impress the lesson more deeply mrs marsh who had a good deal of humor resolved to finish off the trial in an inappropriate manner so she gave hana a holiday and let the girls enjoy the full effect of the play system when they got up on the saturday morning there was no fire in the kitchen no breakfast in the dining room and no mother anywhere to be seen now let us work on the question from her textbook why did the mother give hana the cook a holiday we have just read because the mother wanted to teach them some value and she wanted to enjoy some good humor so that is the reason she gave hana a holiday so that the girls can realize the importance and the value of household work and housekeeping let us proceed further when they got up this is the text that we have in our um, selection When they got up on Saturday morning there was no fire in the kitchen no breakfast in the dining room and no mother anywhere to be seen where was mother mother had confined herself to her room mercy on us her us what has happened cried jo staring about her in dismay my gran upstairs and soon came back again looking relieved but rather bewildered bewildered means confused and a little ashamed Mother isn't sick, only very tired, and she says she's going to stay quietly 
in her room all day and let us do the best we can. It's very queer, queer means strange thing for her to do. She doesn't act a bit like herself, but she says it has been a hard week for her. So we mustn't grumble, but take care of ourselves. That's easy enough. I like the idea. I'm aching for something to do. That is some new amusement, you know, added Joe quickly. In fact, it was an immense relief to them. All have to have a little work. They took hold with a will, but soon realized the truth of Hannah saying, housekeeping isn't ain't no joke. That means they remember that housekeeping, what Hannah said was, it is no joke, it is very difficult. Now they were beginning to understand. There was plenty of food in the larder. Larder is the place in the other cabinet in the kitchen where you keep food, the grain, the oil, etc. While Beth and Emmy sat uh, set the table, Meg and Joe got breakfast, wondering as they did why servants ever talked about hard work. So they were now realizing why the servants never kept said anything about hard work in the kitchen. I shall keep, I shall take some uh, up to mother, though she said she was not to think of her, for she would take care of herself, said Meg, who presided and felt quite maternally, matronly, matronly behind the teapot. Matronly means, um, uh, uh, mat ma matron is a person who takes care of the food and other things. Uh, in a hostel you find a matron, the someone who does the, all the management. So a tray was uh, fitted out before anyone began and taken up with the cook's uh, compliments. The boiled tea was very bitter, the omelette scorched, scorched means burnt, and the biscuits speckled with celerates. But Mrs. Uh, March received her uh, repast with thanks and laughed heartily over it after Joe was gone. Poor little souls, they, were, they will have a hard time. I am afraid, but they won't suffer, and it will do them good," she said, producing the more palatable viands, and which we, she had provided herself with disposing to the bad breakfast, so that their feelings might not be hurt, a motherly little deception for which they were grateful. Many were the complaints below, and great the chagrin of the head cook of her failures. Never mind, I'll get the dinner and be servant to be mistress. Keep your hands nice, see company and give orders, said Joe, who knew still less than Meg about culinary affairs. That means about cooking and taking care of it. They knew very little, but they were acting as if they knew a lot. This obliging offer was gladly accepted and Margaret retired to the parlor which she hastily put in order by whisking the litter under the sofa and shutting the blinds to save the trouble of dusting. Jo, with perfect faith in her own powers and a friendly desire to make up the quarrel, immediately put a note in the office inviting Laurie to, do, to dinner. Laurie was their neighbour, a boy. You would better see what you have got before you think of having company, said Meg when informed of the hospitable but rash act. Oh, this croned beef and plenty of potatoes, and I shall get some asparagus and a lobster for a relish, says, as Hannah says. We'll have lettuce and make a salad. I don't know how, but the book tells. I have a blank man, mange and strawberries for dessert and coffee too, if you want to be elegant. Don't try too many messes, Joe for you can't make anything but gingerbread and molasses candy fit to eat. I wash my hands of the dinner party and since you have asked Laurie on your own responsibility, you may just take care of him. I don't want you to do anything but the civil to be civil to him. Civil means nice and well behaved and help to the pudding. You will give me your advice if I get in a muddle, won't you? asked Joe, rather hurt. Yes, but I don't know much except about bread and a few trifles. 
You had better ask mother's leave before you order anything, returned Meg prudently. Of course I shall. I am not a fool. And Jo went off in a huff at the doubts expressed of her powers. Get what you like and don't disturb me. I am going to I'm going out to dinner and can't worry about things at home, said, said Mrs. Marsh. When Jo spoke to her, I never enjoyed housekeeping. I am going to take a vacation today and read, write, go visiting and amuse myself. The unusual spectacle of her busy mother rocking comfortably and reading early in the morning made Jo feel as if some unnatural phenomena had occurred for an eclipse, an earthquake or a volcanic eruption would hardly have seemed stranger. Everything is out of sort, somehow she said to herself going downstairs. Now let us see the next question in our textbook. Why did the girls feel so helpless when they saw their mother going out for dinner? The girls felt upset when they saw their mother going out for dinner because they always banked on the mother that the mother would do the housekeeping for them. They never realized the value of mother and what work she used to do. When it all fell upon them and they realized that Hannah has gone on a holiday and it was all left on the mother. Mother was not keep not uh, well enough to take care of it but we know the reason that mother had purposely decided not to cook, not to clean, making the girls realize. So when mother was going out. I am going out to dinner and I can't carry about things at home, said Mrs. Marsh. So this made the girls realize that the way the girls were acting mean, the same way the mother tried acting in order to make the girls realize that their decision of uh, taking time off or completely com off from household chores was not the right decision. So we are done with question number 3 of our textbook. Now let us carry on further regarding Jo. The unusual spectacle of her busy mother rocking comfortably and reading early in the morning made Jo feel as if some unnatural phenomena had occurred for an eclipse, an earthquake or a volcanic eruption would hardly have seemed stranger. Everything is out of sort, sorts. Somehow, she said to herself, going downstairs, that's Beth crying. That's a sure sign that something is wrong in the family. If Emmy is bothering, I'll shake her. Feeling very much out of sorts, Jo hurried into the parlor to find Beth sobbing over Pip. Now, um, little explanation over here. Pip was the little bird which was a pet of Beth. Beth used to take care of this bird Pip but now because she was so bored with uh, not doing anything she completely forgot to take care of Pip and now realizing that she had to do some uh, household work on herself she forgot to pee, uh, feed this uh, bird Pip or the canary the bird and the bird died. So now let us read further to understand why Beth was crying. Um, people, the canary lay dead in a cage with little claws pathetically extended as if imploring the food for want of which he had died. It's all my fault. I forgot him. This, There isn't a seed or a drop left. Oh Pip, oh Pip, how could I be so cruel to you? cried Beth, taking the poor thing in her hands and trying to restore him. Jo peeped into half-open eye, felt his little heart, and finding him stiff and cold, shook her head and offered her domino box for a coffin. 
Put him in the oven and maybe he will get warm and revive, said Emmy hopefully. He has been starved. He, ha- he shan't be baked now. He's dead. I'll make him a shroud and he shall be buried in the garden. And I'll never have another bird. Never, Pip, for I'm too bad to own one, murmured Beth, sitting on the floor and her pet folded in her hands. Kindly make a note of a question. Why was Beth upset? And what did she do that she blamed herself? Why was Beth upset? And what did she do that she blamed herself? Kindly write the answer. We have just discovered that she forgot to feed the bird Pip. The canary, the bird, there was no grain, no seed left in the cage and the bird died of hunger. The funeral shall be in the afternoon and we will all go. Now, don't cry, Betty. It's a pity, but nothing goes right this week. And Pip has had to the worst to the experiment. Joe, the sh- uh, make the shroud and lay him in the box and after the dinner party, we'll have a nice little funeral said Joe, beginning to feel as if she had undertaken a good deal. Leaving the others to console, Beth, she departed to the kitchen, which was in the most discouraging stage of confusion. Putting on a big apron, she fell to work, got the dishes piled up ready for washing. Uh, When she discovered that the fire was out, here's a sweet prospect, muttered Joe, slamming the stove door open and poking vigorously among the cinders. Having rekindled the fire, she thought she would go to market while the water heated. Now make a note of Joe. What mistake Joe is going to make now? Joe had uh, opened uh, the heater and placed water and she went out shopping. The walk revived her spirits and flattering herself that she had made good bargains. She trashed home again after buying a very uh, young lobster, some very old asparagus and two boxes of acid strawberries. By the time she got cleared up, the dinner arrived and the stove was red hot. Hannah had left a pan of bread to rise. Meg had worked it up early, set it on the hearth, hearth is the place where the fire is burned, for a second rising and forgotten it. Meg was entertaining Sally's gardener in the parlour when the door flew open and a flowery crocky flushed and dishevelled figure appeared demanding tartly. I say, isn't bread phrase enough when it runs over the pants? Sally began to laugh but Meg nodded and lifted her eyebrows as high as they would go which caused the apparition to vanish and put the sour bread into the oven without further delay. Mrs. Marsh went out. After peeping here and there to see how matters went, also saying a word of comfort to Beth, she sat making a winding sheet while the dear departed lay in state of the domino box. A strange sense of helplessness fell upon the girls as the grey bonnet vanished round the corner and despair despair seized them when a few minutes later Miss Crocker appeared. Miss Crocker was their neighbour who was a nosy neighbour who used to talk a lot. Now why do you think the girls appeared bewildered and confused while their mother left them in the house? They were quite upset because they were left on their own and they hardly knew how to take care of things. Now they were beginning to realize slowly and gradually that being meanness was not the right decision. But they did not admit it at this point. Now see Mrs. Crocker is here. Mrs. Crocker is a person who, who was very much interested in gossiping. They, she had dropped in and she continued gossiping and criticizing things. And then we continue to the next part. 
Language cannot be described with anxieties, experiences and exertions which Jo underwent that morning at the dinner she served up became a standing joke. Fearing to ask any more advice, she did her best alone and discovered that something more than energy and goodwill is necessary to make a cook. She boiled the asparagus for an hour, make a note of the mistakes that now Jo is going to make. She overboiled the asparagus and then to find the um, heads cook off and stalks harder than ever. The bread burnt black, make a note of this also. And the salad dressing so aggravated that uh, she could not make it fit to eat. So the salad was also not good. The lobster was a scarlet mystery that it became red to her but she, uh, she hammered and poked till it was unshelled and it meager proportions concealed in the grove or the lettuce leaves. So the way she served mixed it up with lettuce leaf, it looked quite horrible. The potatoes had to be hurried and now when she hurried the potatoes it so happened the potatoes were not cooked properly in the center it, it was left uncooked not to keeping the asparagus waiting and were not done at, um, at the last the blank manage was lumpy and the strawberries not as ripe as they looked having been skillfully deckened that means now strawberries were also little sour now let us proceed and see how the food was cooked. Well, they can eat beef, bread and butter if they are hungry. Only if it's mortifying to have to spend the whole morning for nothing, thought Jo. And she rang the bell half an hour later than usual and stood hot, tired and disprited, surveying the feast spread before Laurie. Accustomed to all sorts of elegance and Miss Crocker, that was their nosy neighbour, whose tattling tongue would report them far and wide. Poor Joe would gladly have gone under the table as one thing or after another was tasted and left while Emmy giggled. Meg looked distressed. Miss Crocker pursed her lips. Pursed her, pursed her lips means tightened the lips. She didn't like the food at all. And Laurie talked and laughed with all his might to give a cheerful tone to the festive scene. Joe's one strong point was the fruit. She had uh, sugared it well and had a pitcher of rich cream to eat with it. Her hot cheeks cooled the trifle and she drew a long breath as the pretty glass plates went round. And everyone looked graciously at the little rosy islands floating in the sea of creams. What are rosy islands? The strawberries. Miss Crocker tasted first, made a worry face and drank some water hastily. That means she didn't like the food at all. Joe, who refused thinking there might be some be enough, for they dwindled sadly after the picking over. Glanced at Laurie, but he was eating away manfully, though there was a slight pucker about his mouth and he kept his eye fixed on his plate. That means something strange, something was completely strange about the food. Amy, who was fond of delicate fare, took a heaping spoonful, choked, hid her face in her napkin and left the table precipitately. So now we can make out that no one liked Joe's food. Oh, what is it? exclaimed Joe, trembling. Salt instead of sugar. And the cream is sour, replied Meg with a tragic gesture. Jo uttered a groan and fell back in her chair, remembering that she had given the, a last hasty powdering to the berries out of one of the two boxes in the kitchen table and had neglected to put the milk in the refrigerator. She turned scarlet, that means she turned pink now because now she was quite upset with whatever has gone by and was uh, on the verge of crying that means she was about to cry when she met Laurie's eyes that means she looked at Laurie which would look merry in spite of his heroic efforts the comical side of the affair suddenly struck her and she laughed till the tears ran down her cheeks so when she looked at Laurie she there was a little comical relief that the food was really horrible. 
So did everyone else, even Crocker, as the girls called the old lady, and the unfortunate dinner ended gaily. Gaily means very happily, with bread and butter, olives and fun. So that means they ended up eating bread and butter, olive, and they enjoyed. I haven't strength of mind enough to clear up now. That means now they wanted to clear the table, but they didn't have the strength to do it. So we will sober ourselves with a funeral. Now they remember Pip had died, so now they thought of the funeral. Said Joe, and so they rose and Miss Crocker made ready to go, being eager to tell the new story at another friend's dinner table. That means the story that they had seen over here about the about the food cooked by Joe. She had a nice piece of gossip news that she could tell in some other family's house at the table over there. That this is the way Joe made the food and made fun of Joe. So Mrs. Crocker was about to leave. They did sober themselves to the bed's sake. Laurie dug a grave under the ferns in the grove. So them in the open garden they went and they dug up little grave. Ferns are the plants. Pip was laid in. Pip is that little canary, canary the bird, with many tears by his tender-hearted mistress. Who was that? That was Beth. and covered with moss while a wreath of violets and chickweeds have was hung on the stone which bore his epitaph epitaph is means little poetic or um, poetry written on the stone of the grave composed by jo while she struggled with the dinner here lies pip march now this is how they had to mention who died on the 7th of june loved and lamented sore and not forgotten soon At the conclusion of the ceremonies, Beth retired to her room, overcome with emotion, and lobster. And lobster, but there was no place of repose, for the beds were not made, and she found her grief uh, much assuaged by beating up the pillows and putting things in order. Meg helped Jo clear away the remains of the feast, which took half the afternoon, and left them so tired. that they agreed to be contented with tea and toast for supper lorry took emmy to drive which was a deed of charity for the sour cream seemed to have had a bad effect upon her temper mrs march came home to find the three older girls hard at this point let us uh, stop at the moment and uh, proceed to our textbook question Question number four: What mistakes did Joe make while cooking dinner? We can um, go back and uh, read uh, that uh, she happened to um, that potatoes were boiled in hunger, in a in a great hurry, and um, she had uh, uh, added salt in the place of sugar. So I think we have got quite a lot of um, information over here. what uh, mistakes joe had made let us go back and see in our text yes we have found that the salad dressing the bread she had hurriedly she had burned the bread the salad dressing was not right the um, lobster was cooked to red the lettuce leaves and she hid it in the lettuce leaf and potatoes were cooked in a hurry uncooked strawberries were not so ripe so these were all the mistakes that Jo made this is answer to question number four. Who was Miss Crocker and why were the girls upset on seeing her? Uh, Miss Crocker was their neighbor who was a nosy neighbor. She had landed up in her house, and uh, she was more interested in gossip than to know about their welfare. And the girls were quite upset to see her because at that time the housekeeping was not at its peak. Anna had gone away mother was out and the girls were out having their week of uh, no work so I mean, it was the right right time for miss crocker to come and collect the gossip news and moreover the food was badly cooked so miss crocker had landed up at the right time to collect the right kind of gossip that is why the girls were quite upset on seeing miss crocker So we have a uh, covered question number four and question number five. And towards the end, they didn't have the 
uh, strength to clear the table why did the, why do you think the girls did not have any strength to clear the table after the because they did not have that uh, kind of mind uh, they were more worried about the funeral and they were sad about losing the bird pip and then they went on what uh, how did they carry on with the funeral of the bird they covered it they dug up a hole in the um, garden they covered it with the ferns and other um, violets and flowers and they wrote a little poem which was the epitaph uh, on the grave of the little bird we pause at this moment and we'll continue in part 3 If you are new on the channel kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and kindly hit like and get uh, add it to your liked video so that you can refer this for your further reference thank you and have a wonderful day